China says it will, quote, always support Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam. Now, this statement of support from Beijing comes as activists continue to press for Carrie Lam to resign and for her to shelve a controversial extradition bill once and for all. Now, these protests have been a long time in the making, exposing just how ordinary Hong Kongers don't trust the Chinese government. And over the years, Beijing has been gradually exerting more and more influence over Hong Kong. And for those who marched, enough is enough. People power is keeping the pressure on the government. For the third time in a week, mass protests shut down central roads in Hong Kong over a proposal to allow extraditions to mainland China. Activists fear the law would lead to an erosion of civil rights in Hong Kong, which has its own legal system. Police say the crowd was around 338,000 strong. Organizers put the number at close to 2 million. Either way, drone video tells the story. They are angry at evidence of recent police brutality. They are angry that the extradition bill has yet to be fully withdrawn. The city's chief executive has officially suspended passage of the bill, but protesters say that is not enough. They are also angry that the embattled leader of Hong Kong, Carrie Lam, remains in power. But there are other emotions at play here. Uncertainty, concern, fear. Responding to the protests, the Hong Kong Red Cross has opened up a psychological support hotline. There is anxiety about what will come next because Hong Kong is not China yet. Since the handover from Britain in 1997, Hong Kong has been governed under the principle of one country, two systems, giving it rights and freedoms unseen in the mainland for 50 years until 2047. Over the years, Hong Kong protesters have been exercising those rights, successfully challenging a proposed introduction of patriotic education in the local curriculum back in 2012, and failing to bring about true universal suffrage in the pro-democracy umbrella movement protests of 2014. Joshua Wong was the face of both protests. He was released after serving one month for an offense stemming from the umbrella movement. It was his third sentence in prison. I believe it's time for Carrie Lam to end her term. And also, it's time for her to step down. And um, it's hard for us to believe the liar, which means Carrie Lam will really suspend the proposal forever. What we ask for is fully withdraw the evil law. The fear is that 2047 is not just a few decades away. It's already here, but China's freest city won't give in without a fight. Hong Kong people had been lied to so many times that we have learned that the government cannot be trusted. These students, families, business people and senior citizens have tasted freedom in the only home they know, and that is why they march. Now, let's bring in founding chairman of Hong Kong's Democratic Party, Martin Lee. Um, Martin Lee, thank you very much for joining us here on the program. As you know, the protesters, they want Chief Executive Carrie Lam to step down. But is that even achievable? Would Beijing even allow her to resign when that would be a sign of weakness under Xi Jinping? But she must be a liability to Beijing. She has lost credibility with Hong Kong people, particularly with the young people. And uh, th there's something totally wrong with this bill to begin with. It's not the way she handled it that uh, we should object to, but it's the very content of the bill. For 22 years, Hong Kong and mm. mainland China have no arrangements, no extradition or rendition arrangements whereby anybody who committed a crime in mainland China who then escapes to Hong Kong can be transferred back to China for trial. One simple reason, and that is we don't trust the judicial system, and not only we, but a number of countries, including the USA, Canada, and Great Britain, and so on. Because we know that in China, judges will listen to the party. If the party wants anybody to be prosecuted, that person will be prosecuted. If the party, that is the Chinese Communist Party, wants that person convicted, the judge must convict. And there you are. So unless right. that is changed, Unless that is basically changed, why should we uh, upset the apple cart?
And those so are the reasons why there. protesters here want to see the withdrawal of the extradition bill, and they want Carrie Lam to step down. But is yeah. Hong Kong and the chief executive of Hong Kong inherently in an impossible position when the chief executive has to answer to both Hong Kong and Beijing? Is this an impossible task, no matter who's in charge? And that is impossible, and it, it cannot work unless the chief executive is democratically elected by the people of Hong Kong. Then we trust her. And she will find it important and necessary for her own sake to stand up for the people right, of Hong right. Kong. But when, when the chief executive is appointed right, by Beijing, but, uh, how would you expect that person to stand up to Beijing? Right. But at the moment, there are no, there's no democracy in Hong Kong, no democratic Indeed. elections in the near term. I know, sir, you recently went to Washington, D.C. to appeal for help. You went to the State Department. Um, we also learned overnight that Mike Pompeo, who you met with while in Washington, he says that U.S. President Donald Trump will raise the issue of Hong Kong human rights with Xi Jinping at the upcoming G20 summit. Can Donald Trump come to the aid of Hong Kong? Well, the, Beijing will say, mind your own business. Right? This is the uh, internal affairs of China. Yeah. Now, but that is wrong. Because when the Sino-British Joint Declaration was first announced, the U.S. government and the Canadian government and a lot of foreign governments were lobbied by China to support its agreement with Great Britain. So it's really a joint declaration between two countries. But China and Great Britain lobby for international support. And that support was given very publicly. Right. And that is why the immigration tide then right. subsided in 1984. Right. So these governments who supported the one country, two systems and continue to support it have a right, certainly, and an obligation, a moral obligation to Hong Kong to right. defend and speak up for the Hong Kong people when yeah. it is being broken by China. So it's not uh, the, right. this government not minding but it, their business. You've been lobbying for support and you have... You have received support, you know, when you have Mike Pompeo, um, you know, just saying that, you know, con condemning the extradition bill. Um, but what in practical terms can the United States do to help Hong Kong in the situation here? Well, it's not for me to advise any foreign government what to do. It's my job to tell them, and I believe it's the duty of everyone to tell them the exact, the exact position in Hong Kong, what's happening and what we fear. And for instance, the fact right. that we believe the Sino-British Joint Declaration was being broken by Beijing with impunity.